Prince of Persia Rival Swords. Now, as you may or may not know, this game is a port for the Wii of The Two Thrones for the PC. I already did a review of The Two Thrones, so I'm not going to go into plot and level design, music, all the stuff that is, in fact, the exact same. I don't like repeating myself. At most, I would be saying it in a slightly different way, and that would still be repeating myself, and I don't like repeating myself. You know, I can read you. For those who might be wondering, no, it's not that my American contact came through. She hasn't. Now she will. If she's watching this, please feel free to prove me wrong. Anyway, what happened was, I got this on sale. Now, this game... This game... Ubisoft, you know, at some point... This game is a port of another game. A game I've already played twice. And yet I still love it! How can you do it, Ubisoft? I must know your secret! Playing this game, having enjoyed the PC version, I was just delirious, completely high, and not on account of any intake of any illegal substances either. Maybe some are wondering about the graphics. Honestly, I think they're almost the exact same. And I guess that has something to do with the fact that the original PC version was from 2005, and the Wii can, in fact, perform at about that level, at about where the PC was in 2005-2006. And no, the fire doesn't look terribly great, but I don't think it really did in The Two Thrones either. Zervan is actually less bright, which means you can see him better. I'm not sure if that's a pro or a con. Unsurprisingly, the gameplay is at least as much fun as it is in The Two Thrones. It might even be slightly better, because the Wii just is more immersive. To swing your primary weapon, aka the dagger, you swing the nunchuck. To swing your secondary weapon, you swing the nunchuck. Now, it doesn't mimic your moves. They would have to completely reprogram the game to do that. Although on the subject of reprogramming, I think they maybe gave you a charged attack with the dagger that I'm not entirely sure the two thrones had, but maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Anyway, you swing for the sake of the timing. You have just as much control over your weapon or weapons as you did in the PC version. All that's changed is that it's more immersive. To swing a weapon, you actually have to do a swing with one of your arms. And to swing with your partner, you have to go to a certain kind of club. Now, there is one thing that you may have already guessed. When you replace pressing a button with swinging something, then the precise timing, when that is very important, can get a little bit tricky. I'm of course referring to the speed kills. Basically, at first you're gonna mess it up. It takes a little practice. My advice is to just not do a wild movement, because it might interpret it as two strikes, and you'll have to start that speed kill over. Or you might inadvertently pull back after doing that strike, and that'll count as the second strike. Now, what you want to do is do minor little movements with the Wiimote that are still enough to be registered as swings. Do a quick movement to the side, and then the next time, back. Something like that you will get the hang of it. It's a short game, just as Two Thrones, but you will get good enough at it that you don't mess up when it really counts before you've completed the game. And the first many speed kills aren't vital to complete. Also, the boss fight at the end is still awesome. It is maybe a little bit awkward to do the 
powerful charged up swing, but you really don't have to do it all that many times, so it doesn't really matter much. And it's not to the point where it gets irritating. Now, you have the same almost 360 degree camera that you had in the PC version. Use the directional pad to turn the camera, and this works very smoothly. And also, since you often have to turn the camera to the sides, you know, left and right, and that this should be fairly quick and inobtrusive, they made it so that when you tilt the Wiimote to either side, the camera will turn to that side. That does also mean that you have to get used to holding it very straight and very still. But again, this is mostly a good thing. I lost count of how many times it really helped me out. I mean, had you told me that it would work well without a mouse, you know, before I played this game, given the approach they took with this, I would probably have called you a filthy liar. And I apologize for that. And one thing I did ponder before playing this was, would it actually utilize the fact that the Wii can read your movements in different directions with the Wiimote and Nunchuck and implement these for the speed kills? Say you're stabbing someone directly in front of you. This would then mean that you'd have to trigger that move by doing this movement with the Wii mode. They didn't do this, and while it may seem like a missed opportunity, I would argue that it would have been more trouble than it would be worth, partially because there are so many different speed kill moves, depending on which of the at least three different types of enemies there are, and if you're only fighting one or several. And also, the issue is just the timing. And to ask someone to really quickly do what may be a complicated move would probably have taken away from the overall enjoyment. Also, they would actually have to completely retool that feature, because the way it works is you get a very short space of time to very quickly and very precisely activate a strike, and since any movement of the Wiimote strong enough to be registered counts as a strike, it have to rebuild it from scratch. Now this uses the A button as the jump and roll button and the B button as special action, you know, wall running, activating levers, whatnot, so on and so forth. This feels very natural, very intuitive. Whether or not you've played the two thrones, you'll be doing acrobatics and, and engaging in sword fights in no time if you played one of the other recent Prince of Persia games, and if you haven't, it still won't take you very long to get into it. Now, it is a little unfortunate that this appears to have no profile system and only three save slots, so if several people use it on the same machine, yeah. Also, near the end, it honestly did lag a bit for me. Now, what I did was just go back to the main menu and then load my progress, and then it didn't lag anymore. Certainly not enough to make it a bother. If you haven't already got the two thrones for the PC and you like playing on the Wii, I think I would suggest that you get it for the Wii instead. If you do already have it for the PC and this is on sale and you like playing on the Wii, you like the idea of replaying the two thrones on a Wii with the immersiveness and pure fun that comes out of that, go ahead and buy it. You won't regret it. I certainly didn't. That was my spoiler for review of Prince of Persia, Rival Swords. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Hello again, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that me and the magically appearing text are good friends. I'll let him say it.